In this video, I'm going to discuss a new topic related to the pulse coded modulation. The topic is called non-uniform quantization, and another name for it is converting. A third name for it is prog progressive taxation. The three names they belong to the same topic, and we are going to explain why uh, they call the same topic with the three names. Let's remember that last time we talked about PCM pulse coded modulation with uniform quantization, where we quantize the levels uh, equally, uh, they are equal to each other, the quantization levels were equal to each other. We obtained the signal to noise ratio, the signal to quantization noise ratio, and it was 3m squared, m squared bar over m x squared. Where m squared bar, this is the power of our signal, our voice signal, m peak is the uh, peak of the quantizer, this is the range of the quantizer, and l is the number of we see from this equation that the signal to noise ratio is dependent on the power of the voice signal. What's the problem with this? There is a problem here. The problem is people when they speak, even in the same environment, two persons in the same room, when they speak, their power or the power of their voice signals might differ by 40 dB, which is a huge difference. And hence, the signal to noise ratio which indicates the quality of the received voice will differ between the two persons in the same environment by 40 dB. So the quality is going to be different of two persons in the same environment, even for the same person. Even if one person is talking, sometimes one person is talking loudly and sometimes talking softly. When he talks loudly, when the person talks loudly, the signal to noise ratio will be high because the power of the signal will be high. When the person speaks softly, then the power of the signal will be low and hence the signal to noise ratio will be low, which means that the quality of the voice is going to change over time, depending on whether that person speaks loudly or speaks softly. But ideally, when they did research about this, they found that it's more comfortable for the listener who is listening for the voice signal to have a constant SNR all the time. Constant SNR, constant distortion all the time. Rather than having some part of the voice with high quality, low distortion, and some other part with high distortion, it's better for the listener to have constant SNR all the time. Even if this SNR is not the best, it's not the optimal, it's better to have something suboptimal but constant, fixed all the time. This is from research about listening to voices. Even you can try it for yourself. If you are listening to something and some part of the, uh, for, of the speech is with high quality and some parts you feel a lot of distortion and then good quality again, a lot of distortion, you will not feel comfortable. You will start to feel annoyed. But if I provide you with a speech that is suboptimal in quality, but with the same or, or, or almost the same SMR all the time, almost the same quality all the time, that would make you more comfortable. So here this is the issue. The issue is that when we did uniform quantization last time, okay, which means that we took uniform quantization levels, which means that if you have large samples like this, it will be treated as the small samples. Which means that if the person speaks loudly with large amplitude, it will be treated, it will be quantized in the same way that when the person speaks, speaks softly with small amplitudes. So both of them will be treated the same way. This is what we did last time. And this is the cause of the problem. This is the cause of the problem. Why this is the cause of the problem? Because when we do uniform quantization and we treat the high samples similar to the low samples, which means, which means that the high samples will see error, quantization error, which is delta V over 2, and the low samples will see the same error, which is delta V over 2, same error exactly, because delta V is the same for this quantization level and this quantization level, this quantization level, delta V is the same. So the large samples, they are going to see 
the same quantization error. This is the maximum value of the quantization error. Same thing for the low samples. They are going to see the same maximum value of the quantization error. And this is unfair. It's unfair to allow the large samples to see the same quantization error that the low samples will see. This will cause that for high samples, the signal to noise ratio will be large, while for low samples, the signal to noise ratio will be small because the error will be, with respect to the small samples, the error will be large with respect to the small samples, while the error will be small compared to the large samples, right? So it's not fair. This is like in the tax, or when we go to the economics here, we are, this is similar to having the same tax for rich people and poor people, collecting the same amount from rich people and poor people. And this is unfair. What are we supposed to do here? If we think about taxing, we are supposed to have more taxes from the rich people than the taxes that we collect from the poor people. This is what we call progressive taxation. Progressive taxation means that you increase the taxes as the person becomes richer. As the income of the person is higher, you increase the taxes that you collect from that person, right? That's why one name of the, our topic today is called progressive taxation, which means that you should increase the tax as the income increases, right? You should as the amplitude of the sample increases, you should have more error. And if the amplitude of the sample decreases, which means that you have small samples, you are speaking softly, then the error must be small. This is how to have a fair signal transition. And if you do that, then you are going to solve this problem. Because if you reduce the error that the small samples are going to see and you increase the error that the large samples are going to see then approximately you are going to have same signal to noise ratio all the time so this is the topic of today is that when you do uniform quantization you are going to have a signal to noise ratio that is dependent on the power of your signal which means that uh, if you are speaking loudly then the signal to noise ratio will be uh, uh, very good. If you are speaking softly, the signal to noise ratio will be poor. And here again, when I, I say speaking softly, the signal to noise ratio will be poor, I'm not talking about that you are going to hear me with a low voice. No, it's natural. If I speak softly, you are going to hear me with a low voice. This is normal. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking that about that if I speak softly, you are going to hear a bad quality. Not only low, you are not only you are going to hear me with a low voice, you are going to hear me with a low voice and the signal or the voice is going to be distorted. The quality of the voice will be poor. So the signal to noise ratio here, it's not about low or high, huh? it's about that distortion will be high if I speak softly. So please differentiate between the two things. If I speak softly, it's normal to hear me with a low voice. But the problem is, if I speak softly here, then you are going to hear a lot of distortion in the signal, a huge distortion in the signal compared to the power of my signal. So in order to overcome this problem, we have to think about progressive taxation, which means that for samples that have small amplitudes, we should let them see small error. And for samples that have large amplitude, we should let them see large error. How can we do that? We can do that by using non-uniform sampling. Non-uniform sampling. So the second name of today's topic is non-uniform sampling, which is equivalent to progressive taxation. So imagine now, imagine now that instead of having uniform quantization levels, we are going to reduce the width of the quantization levels in the small amplitudes and increase the width of the quantization levels for the large amplitudes. In this case, for example, let's 
do here a quantization event that is uh, with a small width and same thing from the other side for, for the negative side and then the next quantization event will be larger the next quantization event will be larger and the next quantization event will be larger and then from the negative side the same thing the next quantization event is larger next is larger and next is larger so as you see now we have non-neutral quantization the width of the first level let's uh, work on the positive side the width of the first level is smaller than the width of the second level smaller than the width of the third smaller than the width of the fourth right what's the benefit of this the benefit of this is that if you have a small sample here if you have a small sample the error that the small samples are going to see will be delta v over 2 but which delta v delta v of the first level delta v over 2 of the first level so the error here the quantization error that the small samples will see will be small so small samples will see small error while large samples large samples if you have a large sample the large sample will see large error because the, the width of the quantization level here is large so if you are going to quantize this sample you are going to quantize it at the middle so the error will be delta v over 2 but which delta v delta v of the fourth quantization level which is the largest quantization level so large samples are going to see large quantization error and small samples are going to see small quantization error and then on average or approximately all the samples the ratio between the amplitude of the sample or the power of the uh, voice for small samples uh, to the noise will be the same as the power of the voice in case of large samples to the power of the noise so the signal to noise ratio approximately the signal to noise ratio approximately whether you are speaking softly or speaking loudly approximately will be the same again why because when you speak softly the small samples are going to see small quantization errors so the signal to noise ratio will be small over small here when you speak loudly you will get high samples and you will see high or large error so the signal to noise ratio will be high over high so approximately you can get approximately the same signal to noise ratio so this is why we call it non-uniform sampling because we use non-uniform quantization this is non-uniform quantization not non-uniform sampling this is non-uniform i'm sorry for that this is non-uniform quantization because you are using non-uniform quantization levels and this is how we can solve the problem of signal to noise ratio as a concept